Hi everybody, let's do the first line of the number two piece in Suzuki Book Two for piano, a short story. Let's do the left hand first, because that's quite often the bit that we find the hardest, but it's also the part that usually holds the tempo. So it's really useful if we know it already. We're going to start on middle C. And there's nothing too much to think about, except that we have to move in the second little group of four notes down to a B. And then back up again. And then we've got to leap down and do this rather grand shift. So the hardest bit is going to be that bar there. So when you practice this, when you sit down to practice, if you're doing the 20 times challenge, which is each bar 20 times, do that bar maybe more and do it first. Do the hard bits first, because it's the bits you do first that always have time spent on them and purpose, okay? But let's go back to the beginning. When you're learning a piece, you wouldn't start in the middle, but when you're practicing it, you might. So, middle C. And then these lines, these smooth lines, these smiley face sort of lines, really mean to do these in sort of groups. And what I do is I think of them as little breaths. So, um, or don't breathe with them because you might pass out. Um, but little um, uh, conversations. So, hello, hello, hi there, hi there. How are you? I'm okay, thank you. Do you see what I mean? If you do that, it kind of helps with that beautiful, um, smooth rhythm. And you're keeping it all in, in a sort of tidy way. That's something I do. You might have a, another idea that you use. Let's do that really slowly and try and get the shift. Now, let's look at the shift. So we, we're at bar three. And we're coming right down. It's a big stretch. You may not be able to reach. You may have to do a little jump. That's okay, as long as you keep it as smooth as possible. And you could mark with a marker pen that you're needing to shift there. Now it's going down into the bass clef, so we're reading all of this quite differently. We're back to bass clef, because of course this part, really you're stealing the clef from the uh, right hand, or well, yeah, borrowing, not stealing because we're going to give it back. It's 13 hours. Thank you. That's one of my robots telling me the time. So, let's do that really slowly. doing is I'm holding the first note down to give it a bit, the first note of each uh, group of four quavers, uh, semi-quavers, uh, quavers, sorry. Um, I'm holding them down to, um, uh, it just gives, adds a bit of resonance. So if you're on an electric piano um, and you want to do that, I'm going to suggest that you do, but it doesn't say pedal or anything like that on the piece so have a listen to the way it is produced on the um, recording the official Suzuki recording um, I don't like the way uh, an electric piano can be a little bit stunted um, and lacking in feeling and because this says expressive um, I think it sounds more expressive if I do that you don't have to so we've sorted out our movement 
we know the time. Now it's common time, so it's one and two and three and four and. One and two and three and four and. One plus two plus, do you see? So that's where you get the four. But these um, quavers obviously are half notes. So they're, um, I'm going to do some theory classes, by the way. Um, I'll start those in a, in a short while. I think we need to start um, using the note names now that we're on to book two. Um, I've avoided them to now, but I think it's important. So, but there's no point in, um, you know, uh, throwing you in at the deep end. So we're going to start uh, quite gently. Hopefully you know what clefs are. Hopefully you know what the stave is. And hopefully you understand whole beats, quarter beats, half beats, etc. So let's have a look at this right hand. Don't be frightened. It's very pretty. Now we're starting on this top G. And the next note is an F. And the next note is an F as well. But there's no rest in the middle. So we're going to hold that while we play two notes on the left, OK? So it's a little bit confusing to look at. So what it means is the rhythm is um, is actually, if I play, I'll play the first three bars, it's, it sounds a bit easier. Do you see? Da, 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 bit out of tune. So when we put the left hand with it, we're... Lifting, down, hold, up, down, hold. So it's very important that you use those rests in that right hand. You must lift up. It's very important because it's going to change everything. So up, hold, up, hold. Okay? It's going to take a little bit of listening to. Listen to the recording. You'll understand it there. But really hear those rests. Um, the absence of sound is a very important tool in music. So, what's next? Let's have a look. Now, we've got our third finger already on that E. But if you want to put your second, you can because you're going to need to reach this A. So let's have a play around. We start on the C with our thumb. If you use your third, you stretch now up to the A, okay? I think that's a little bit easier, but you could start on that C and then move to your second, And you're already on the A. You decide how you prefer to play it. And it'll all be to do with the size of your fingers, probably. And just what your, um, what your body prefers to do. And what your mind can remember. But decide now. When you first learn a piece, the breakdown at the initial stages of learning and writing all the fingering in is the most important part. So what you can do is you can, and I recommend this for all my students, is that you actually write in all the fingering. And if you're not sure what the name of a note is, you can write that in too. It really doesn't matter because you will stop looking after you've played it a few times. So I think that's a really good idea. OK, so I think that's it. A short story. What a lovely, lovely piece. I'll pop it up later, my own, uh, I'll perform it in its entirety and I'll pop that up for us later on, okay? I love this one, actually. Tomorrow we're going to do, um, we'll, we'll move on as well, we'll do a, bar, a line a day and also we'll start number three tomorrow, The Happy Farmer, which uh, the cellists are doing as well at cello school, so that's rather exciting. 